Happy New Year, loved ones. It's me, it's Jazz, the female field guide. I love you guys. I've missed you. I hope that everyone had an amazing New Year's, but now it's time to get back to business and it's time to talk football. Most importantly, I want to talk about the playoffs. Playoffs? Playoffs? <laughs> Shout out to Coach Jim Mora. Okay, ladies, lots to talk about. This weekend is known as Wild Card weekend. We've got two games on Saturday and we've got two games on Sunday and I'm going to pick one from each day and kind of break it down you guys and give you guys some players and some keys to success for each you know each of the games and hopefully you know I get it right. So let's start off with the teams that are on a bye. Now ladies I think I've said this before bye is when the team they don't have a game. It's a bye week they're chilling at the house pizza white wine spritzers hot links, Roscoe's, whatever they want. They're at the house, they're resting their bodies. And most importantly, with it being the playoffs, the first week of the playoffs, they're watching the teams who they may play the next week. So out of the 32 teams in National Football League, ladies, only 12 of these teams are going to make it to the playoffs. But wait a minute. Hmm. 16 of those teams are eligible for the playoffs, and that's why they need to have a wild card weekend because out of the 16 teams that were eligible for the playoffs, like they said, there's only 12 spots. So we've got this wild card weekend, two games on Saturday, two games on Sunday, AFC, American Football Conference, and NFC, National Football Conference. They're going to battle it out to get this party started. Super Bowl is in Dallas, home of the Dallas Cowboys. Oh my goodness, it's like 30 days away. I'm ready to rock. Are you ready to get down to business? Let's do it. Okay, so there's four teams that are at, at the house, like I said, by week. And um, those, those teams, they got the first spot, the number one best record out of each of their division. And the Patriots, AFC, like I said, American Football Conference, best record Tom Brady you know quarterback he's got a mullet but it doesn't matter because they're winning games next the, the second team that's at home is the Steelers they won the AFC North Ben Roethlisberger he's supposedly engaged so congratulations Ben him and the Pittsburgh Steelers throughout the house chilling the Chicago Bears Kyle Orton uh you know Brian Erlacher who I have affinity for his baby mama's black so I love him uh and the Chicago Bears throughout the house chilling the last team that's home that has a bye week is the NFC South champions, the Atlanta Falcons. They have a very young quarterback named Matt Ryan. They call him Matty Ice because he's so chill under pressure. Last time this team clinched their division was in 2004. Um, and there's actually a possibility that if the Eagles go on and win this wildcard weekend, Michael Vick and the Eagles, well, they're going to be playing the Atlanta Falcons. Don't worry, I'll have a whole video for that. Okay, so those are the teams that are at the house, they're chilling, they're just waiting to see who, you know, who they're going to play next week. Saturday's games, the Saints and the Seattle Seahawks. Now, there's a little controversy because it's the team that have the best record out of each division that they make it to the playoffs. Well, the Seattle Seahawks, they're just a part of a kind of subpar division, the NFC West, and the teams there aren't very good, but they had the best record out of the worst. They had a 7-9 and nine record. Now, Ladies, when we've talked about records, I've told you about the um, 500 record. That means that, you know, the, the wins are always the first number and the loss is the second. Well, they have a 7-9 record. That means they have an under 500 record. And that was the big controversy that the Seattle Seahawks are in, you know, the, the playoffs. And they're also hosting a home game. They're hosting the New Orleans Saints. So that's been a big, you know, ah, but they can't help it if they're in a sucky division. So they play first, the Saints, they're, you know, the defending champions, they play the Seattle Seahawks, Saturday, 4.30 Pacific, 1.30, uh, um, you know, West Coast time. The second game in which I'm going to get into detail right now is the Jets and the Colts. I'm very conflicted, you guys, because I write for the Colts for ProSportsBlogging.com. Check me out, ProSportsBlogging.com, Jazzy Fizzle. And plus, I'm a Southern California kid, so I got to root for Mark Sanchez, former quarterback for USC and super cute okay honestly this is a matchup I, I I don't know who I'm gonna root for I know I'm gonna be somewhere with the white run spritzer in my hand in front of the two watching the game okay so let's talk about the Colts and the Jets let's break it down this team AFC American Football Conference um, you know the, the, the Colts have actually had a 
come tumultuous season, uh, about three or four games ago, Peyton Manning, their quarterback, he was going on some sort of interception throwing picks rampage. The man threw so many interceptions in the course of three or four games. It was really uncharacteristic and you know the analyzers really started to throw him under the bus. But of course, it's Peyton Manning. He bounces back. He's the best. The Colts have gone to the playoffs nine years in a row. They're going for their ninth time going to the playoffs. That's a record. That's team history. I mean, that's truly amazing. Go Colts. Some things about the Colts this season is that they had a lot of injuries to key people. And so a lot of people were saying, okay, how is Peyton Manning going to pull this out? Well, like I said, he's one of the best. And he's really going to have to rely to some really young wide receivers and tight ends on his team. One, rookie Blair White. I mean, he's stepped up and just been phenomenal. Watch out for him. The second guy is Jacob Tammy. Uh, he's also a young guy, and he has been extremely consistent. He's a bigger guy, tight end. I mean, Peyton Manning will get the ball into the tightest spots, and he'll catch it. He's going to have to rely on them. But let's not forget about the two veterans. Let's not forget about the clutch wide receivers, and that's wide receiver Pierre Gasson and Reggie Wayne. Uh, Reggie Wayne and, and uh, Peyton Manning, they've broken records for uh, consecutive touchdown passes, and they are truly a one-two punch. So those are some offensive weapons that Peyton Manning, you know, with so many people going down and injured, he hasn't really been able to, to uh, create a stride with them, but he's going to have to get it done. They had to win all three of their games to go to the playoffs, and they did. So there you go. A few things that took place with the Colts that really surprised a lot of people is that all of a sudden they have a run defense. Ladies, that means that their defense have been stopping the running backs from getting touchdowns and getting a lot of yards. Now, out of the 32 teams in the NFL, this season they were ranked 26 in run defense. That's not good. No one really took them seriously. But the, the past few games, they've been holding like you know top-notch running backs to under 100 yards, which is very uncharacteristic of the Colts defense when they played the Jacksonville Jaguars where they were battling for AFC uh, South and you know if they win they go to the playoffs if the Jags win they go to the playoffs they have a running back from you know he came from UCLA Maurice Jones Drew they call him pocket Hercules he's so tiny his one thigh is at the side of my head okay they held him for about 89 yards under 100 yards which is great they played the Raiders, and even though the Raiders didn't make it to the playoffs, they had a good run. They have a great running back in Darren McFadden. They held this guy to under 100 yards. So people are like, what, what? And then their last game of the regular season, they played the Tennessee Titans. They win that game. They go to the playoffs. They have a fantastic running back, Chris Johnson, who was breaking records last year. They held this guy to under 100 yards. So all of a sudden, they have birthed some sort of run defense. So that's one of the keys to success. You know, they're playing the Jets. The Jets have two great running backs, LaDainian Thomason. I don't know if he drank some sort of fountain of youth, but he was traded, uh, you know, from the Chargers to, to the Jets, and he's playing lights out. They have another running back, Sean Green. He's pretty good, too. So the keys to success defensively for the Indianapolis Colts is they've got to stop the run. The defensive ends, Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis, they've got to make sure that they get to Mark Sanchez, they've got to make sure they rough him up. He's a younger guy. He's unpredictable. They got to get to the quarterback and, and allow him, to, you know, force him to make mistakes. And they got to stop the run. The Jets also have um, some great, great wide receivers, but because Mark Sanchez, he's still kind of finding his stride. Their team has been really unpredictable and haven't been able to score a lot of a lot of touchdowns. They do have a wide receiver in San Antonio Holmes that uh, the cornerbacks. They really need to, you know, they need to stick with him and they need to guard him. So those are the keys, keys to success for the Indianapolis Colts so that they can go home and win another game and lock down the AFC and, and, and live to see another game for next week. All right, let's talk about the New York Jets. Head coach Rex Ryan. Uh, the Colts actually played, they played uh, the, the Jets last year and the Colts beat the Jets. So Rex Ryan, he's a talker. He's so animated uh, at the press conferences, and he said now it's personal. So he always gives people, you know, blackboard material. Ladies, when you hear an analyst say blackboard material, that means, you know, sound bites and different quotes from other teams that the coaches put on the whiteboard and the blackboard to kind of psych out the team and uh, get them pissed so that they're ready to play on, um, on Saturday or Sunday. 
like I said, the New York Jets, they've been very unpredictable. They've won quite a few games on the road, but they've been in overtime or, you know, last minute. You know, Mark Sanchez is throwing Hail Mary, uh, you know, Hail Mary passes. And it's like, you know, when it comes to the playoff, you've got to have consistency. So Mark Sanchez definitely has to step up and show that he is, you know, worthy of being in the playoffs. Like I said, he's got two great running backs, LaDainian Thomason. I mean, he's still got it, Sean Green. Let's not forget he's got some great uh, wide receivers too. Braylon Edwards, which is a QT, okay? Super cutie. And Santonio Holmes. Santonio Holmes was traded from the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, he's still making plays. So if, if Sanchez can either get the ball to his running game early and, and get the ball, air it out, and give it to his wide receivers, it's going to be a hell of a game. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Another key for the for the Jets is uh, their defense. They've got some, uh, you know, very well known uh, and and somewhat big mouth cornerbacks. One in Darrell Rivas. Last year he coined uh, when he's guarding his players, they don't get the ball and they're not they're on an island. They're on Rivas Island. Well, he's had injuries, hamstrings, and stuff like that, and he hasn't been able to really produce the way that he did last year. Well, the Colts have some amazing wide receivers. And uh, Darrell Rivas and Antonio Camardi, they need to stick them. So those are the keys to success for the Indianapolis Colts and for the New York Jets for the AFC uh, Wild Card Weekend. Oh my goodness, they play Saturday. I'm so excited. I honestly, I'm not gonna gonna pick a team because I love them both. So good luck to both of them, ladies. I hope that you were able to soak up a little something, and I hope that you try to catch the game. If you have any questions, you know you can always write on my Facebook, facebookcom backslash female field guide. Sunday night, the show we're gonna be recapping all of this. Give me a call. Um, I'll answer any questions. We'll have some fun. So this is the female field guide signing off. <laughs>